There's something from RGT 85's past that can't be overlooked. It's gone unnoticed for years. This is so out of character from what he has been known to do and be. It's as if someone else did it. The complete opposite of who we know RGT 85 to be. You ever had a really bad case of constipation? Yes. Yes, I have. We know his name, what sports teams he likes, which games he prefers to play, and others that he dislikes. We know he's an efficient worker, having over 2,000 videos on his channel, posting them almost daily. Even after a serious health scare, he was back at it a few days later. His persona is that of the ultimate bro, a guy you can hang around and have a good time with. He has steadfast loyal fans and equally faithful critics. He's a little rough around the edges, but that's part of the appeal of his channel. What is, I don't know what the state is. I literally took the shirt out of the dryer and it was there. A channel that was once centered around retro video games, but has changed dramatically over the years. RGT has even sold off the vast majority of his retro gaming collection. Is RGT85 just a sloppy, lazy creator that makes videos with clickbait thumbnails with no substance? Or is there more to this guy? Did you know that he's written and directed a short film? Neither did I. Sean Long, also known as RGT85, started making videos for Nintendo Enthusiast in February of 2014. As the editor-in-chief of Nintendo Enthusiast, he started making YouTube videos for them because he said he knew how, which he didn't, but ended up figuring out how to do it. So I have a 480p webcam. This is actually the maximum resolution of the webcam that you're seeing here. I had a lamp in my room and I had Windows Movie Maker. And that's how, that's how I did everything. These early videos would lay the groundwork for what was to come. Even the way he titled his videos are similar to how they are titled now. He made gaming videos for Nintendo Enthusiast for a little over a year, until he branched off and started making them for his own channel. On May 8th of 2015, Sean uploaded his first video as RetroGameTube85. You can tell that he was excited to do it, mentioning that he can talk about whatever, whenever he wants. Like most creators early on, RGT85 experimented with many different types of videos. With things like top 5 videos, news-centered episodes, reviews, reaction videos, and buying guides. And that was only within the span of just over a month. He would then branch off into other directions as well, with let's plays and pickup videos. In most of these early works, Sean would set up different camera angles and include skits. He was really trying his best to find what he wanted to do that also resonated with an audience. There's quite a lot of effort put into them, not just someone sitting in front of a shelf full of games talking about gaming cells or news. These were thought out videos. He would eventually find success talking about GameStop, something he still brings up occasionally. Because I was a GameStop employee, granted it was 15. But this is just what's on the surface of the RGT85 channel. We all know what the channel is like now. We get the guy talking into the camera with the shelves of games in the background. Well, we used to. Now it's a small shelf of games and toys with the computer back there. But there's another side to the RGT85 channel. During this early experimental phase, Sean got really creative. More creative than almost every other gaming related channel. This guy made a short film titled Blink. Blink is a real deal piece of art. Sean wrote, directed, and starred in it. It clocks in at 6 minutes and 58 seconds. By far the best 6 minutes and 58 seconds of the entire RGT85 channel. It's the exact opposite of anything else RGT has ever made. It goes against every gamer channel checklist. First off, there's no dialogue. Music and expressions are the only vehicles used to bring the story to life. That's bold. Most people don't know much about Sean, except he likes to talk. Arcade one-up cabinets, arcade one-up cabinet, this arcade one-up cabinet, this arcade one-up cabinet, arcade one-up cabinet, arcade one-up cabinet, arcade one-up cabinets, arcade one-up cabinet, this arcade one-up cabinets, these arcade one-up cabinets, arcade one-up cabinet is their arcade one-up cabinets, their arcade one-up cabinets, arcade one-up cabinets, the arcade one-up cabinet, their arcade one-up cabinet, the arcade one-up cabinet, the arcade one-up cabinet, arcade one-up cabinet, that arcade one-up cabinet, to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cabinet. But this time around, he chose not to, and it paid off. The film does well without it. The whole thing is shot in black and white. We know how much gamers like bright RGB lights, but this short film isn't about gaming. The absence of color also conveys emotion, adding to the story. It appears as if Sean really thought this through. The most ambitious part of the whole production is the use of multiple camera angles, something that's gone missing from RGT's latest works. These shots vary between handheld footage and locked on shots with a tripod. Besides Sean's acting, 
the thing you'll notice the most is the music. It's an original score made for this film. It carries the whole thing forward every step of the way. The music coupled with the acting does work to tell the story. The first shot is a handheld close-up of Sean's head. He slowly rolls it forward and opens his eyes, signaling to us that he's waking up, just as the title of the film appears in the frame. That's quite the introduction. It lets us know right away who the main star is. And why wouldn't he be? It's written and directed by him. It's only fitting that he's at center stage. You can tell that he was trying really hard to portray the emotions his character is going through. His go-to move, which I would call his signature move, is the head and face rub. You know, when you're really upset about something, you bring your hands up and mess with your eyes or something? It's fairly common to see people do this. But wow, it's used a lot here. Almost every scene where he's remembering or going through something, he's got the head slash face rub going on. Going over to IMDb, yes, this short film has an IMDb page, there's a solitary review titled, The Story of a Loser and His Girlfriend. I think it sums up RGT's performance quite nicely here. It says, It's clear the lack of experience from the man, who's often looking awkward while trying to show emotion to the camera. Maybe a little less face and head rubbing would have pushed this performance higher, though it's miraculous that this short film even exists. So judging this performance next to big Hollywood actors isn't fair. Sean isn't focused on acting, and more on video centered around gaming news and reviews. By looking at it with the bar lowered, the performance is commendable. But Sean isn't the only person in this film. There's a supporting actor, Danielle Baumgartner. She steals every scene she's in, mainly because you're wondering what in the world is going on most of the time. The IMDb review even mentions this by saying, I found the girl a nice actress. She does a great job in her role. Danielle appears and disappears quite a few times. You eventually piece together that her scenes are memories that RGT is reliving. Obviously, they were a couple at one time, but that's all over now. This guy is having a hard time getting over losing her, though he may be a little too grief-stricken. At the midpoint of the film, he starts collapsing every time a memory of her pops into his head. His internal pain has his legs give out and his hands go straight to his face. As the story progresses, she starts to show up more and more often. The music starts getting intense as well, as if the sorrow was getting worse. He remembers baking cookies with her, playing games with her by his side, and gets so upset that he throws his GameCube controller at a mirror. Luckily, it doesn't break. That would have been seven more years of bad luck. By the end of the film, you're wondering what could have been so great about this girl that this guy can't get over her. We make the trek down the stairs again where Sean walks toward the living room. There's someone on the couch. Is this the final memory before he gets over her? The scene jumps to him sitting on the couch, staring directly into the camera with a blank expression on his face. Then the scene jumps back to reveal that the woman is on the couch next to him, but something isn't right. She's covered with smears of something. Then RGT kisses her and gets a little handsy. The scene jumps back into a close-up of RGT holding a knife that's covered in something that he licks. I believe this is jelly or jam, but I think it's supposed to be, well, you know. We finally end on RGT giving us a sinister smile. The credits roll and that's it. There are a few takeaways from this short film. First off, Sean is a little handsy with his co-star. There are two scenes where those hands find themselves in a few intimate places. Second, there's a weird bathroom scene where Sean is relieving himself. Don't worry, it's just a number one. But still, this isn't a typical movie shot. It's completed with a shake and all. I guess we can give him some points for being daring. But then those points are taken away because he flushes and doesn't wash his hands. To top it all off, he rubs his face before he leaves. Why? It's a good reminder that this is still an RGT85 video, and the rough around the edges look is still here. This scene lasts an uncomfortable amount of time. Even if it were half the time, it would still feel awkward. We also get a good shot of the tripod sitting on top of the toilet tank. It was a good effort hiding the camera equipment with his body, but it peeks through during the turn toward the mirror. Third, the story has a surprise twist ending. That was great. It was also well executed. The whole video looks like a sad breakup story, but it isn't. Sean brought this woman to her demise, and he's been processing what he's done. That kind of inner turmoil would absolutely bring someone to the ground. We can't gloss over the fact that this was an ambitious effort to bring to life. It's completely out of left field. It's out of the ordinary for almost any video creator to make something like this, let alone Sean Long who only started making YouTube videos less than two years prior. There are some skits creators do in their videos, but to make a full-on short film that has nothing related to what they normally do, that's commendable. It took planning and effort, and he showed us another side to the laid-back, cool uncle, ultra-bro he comes across in every other video. 
That should be celebrated. It's a real piece of inspired art and not another video about an eShop sale. Imagine if this video would have done better. Maybe we could have seen some more creative works from him. It's easy not to care about this sort of thing. Maybe you only watch his channel for his eShop videos. I'm sure there are people like that out there, and that's okay. But there's something about this video in particular that says a lot about Sean Long. He, at this time in his life, had more to show us besides retro games and emulation boxes. It's incredible that this video even exists. There's something from RGT85's past that we've always overlooked. It's mainly gone unnoticed for years, only seen a few thousand times. It's so out of character from what he has been known to do and be, it's as if someone else did it. The complete opposite of who we know RGT85 to be. Sean Long isn't just a sloppy, lazy creator that makes videos with clickbait thumbnails with no substance. For one brief moment, we had a spark of real creativity. Did you think this would be on his channel? Neither did I, and I hope we see more.